Now we're going to get deep into the sample section in our sound slot. So we already explained the pattern, which we have right here. And we also have the piano roll. And right below that, we have this little icon, which is for sampler and for the sample. Now you can see here all these sounds are samples, obviously. And as I go down here, the first selection we have is record. And I'll move my cursor up and down, and each sample is selected right there, and it fills up the view there for that particular sampler. Now I'm going to close this out, see it much better, and we can see this much better here. And as I scroll down, we've got that. Let's make this like this. There we go. A much better view. And here we can see the first option is record, of course. But to hear about these sounds, I can go right here and go to the next one. And the bottom one, back at the top, see? So, we have record, we have edit, we have slice, and we have map. We can map out our samples across a keyboard, obviously, right here, as you can see. And the natural note here is middle C, which is C3. That means the sample will play at the sample rate that we sampled it at when we press or select C3 on our MIDI keyboard or any kind of controller, like our machine controller, where that particular pad is set to C3. Now I want to talk about the record section here in our sampler. Now right below record we have the input section. And here we have EXT for external, and here we have INT for internal. So these are the inputs. Here for the input we have IN1, that's left, then we have right, and then we have left and right. Now to hear these inputs, we're going to need to go over here, where it says not detect, not slice start here, but right here on the map it says here a little icon for a speaker right there. See that? And this is our threshold level. We've got our threshold level here. As you can see, as I move this threshold level up and down, you notice that it changes here on the threshold for the dB. So it's going to detect when the signal crosses this threshold level, it will start to sample. Or I can press start here, and it will sample. So here, I can go, let's say, go to left. And now you can hear my voice. It's almost like it's doubling in a sense, but it's on the left side. So obviously my mic is plugged up into my system, and we can hear it. So I'm going to go to in to right, and now it's on the right side, which is kind of cool. So as you can see, my voice is crossing the threshold level here. See? So I'm going to go to here. And we're going to go left and right for two input. And now we have my voice going in to left and right. You can see it right there. Now if I turn this off, you don't hear it anymore. But you do see the signal going in. So be aware of that when you get ready to sample something directly in the system. And we don't want to get it too loud. We see here it's going into the red. We don't want that. Be aware of what your levels are going to be. And how loud or how high you want to set the threshold level or how low you want to set it. If I'm using a record or maybe a CD player or I might be using an MP3 player, I won't need too much, so I'll put it right here probably. But if I want to get the very start of a record, I want to make sure I go low. That way it picks it up. The minute it hears it, it will start to sample. Or I can press start to start sampling automatically.